everyone, Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a deeper look at the constellation of Leo the Lion. We'll take a look at some of the deep space objects that you can find with the use of a telescope. Now, you won't be able to see these with just your eyes, so you will need a decent telescope and some dark sky areas. But we'll show you how to find some of the coolest deep sky galaxies and objects in the constellation of Leo by using Stellarium, our sky simulator software. So without any further ado, let's jump in and take a look and see what we can find. So here we are standing in front of the CERN and Earth and Space Center at Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our date set for April 16th and our time set for 9 o'clock at night, which is a great time to go out and take a look. Now we're looking for Leo the Lion, and it can be found if we turn our way towards the south and then look almost straight up in the sky. And we will find Leo over here towards the high south-southeast part of the sky. You can find it by the bright star Regulus right here, as well as a sort of backwards question mark shape here. And we can use some of these stars to help us find some of these deep space objects that we're going to be looking for. Regulus is a good place to start since it is the brightest star in Leo. Now here around the city of Chicago, we do have a lot of light pollution, which will make it a lot harder to see some of these things. So in order to help us find some of these deep space objects, I'm going to turn off our atmosphere in Stellarium, and it'll make it a little bit easier for us to spot some of these things so we know where to point our telescopes to find some of these really cool deep sky objects that we have. The first one we're going to be looking for is called Leo 1. It's a dwarf galaxy in Leo, and it's right next to that bright star Regulus. So if we zoom in on Leo as we get closer and closer, we'll start to see it come into view. Now, this is a pretty hard thing to find, even though it is close to Regulus. But that's actually what makes it really hard to see. Because Regulus is a very bright star, the light from that makes this little dwarf galaxy, one of our local group of galaxies, hard to find with a telescope. So you need to know right where you're looking. And like I said, it is just above that star Regulus. And you're going to need to focus your telescope there for a little while in order to let the light start coming through. And if you can find some nice dark sky areas and you have a halfway decent telescope, then you should be able to find it. And it has hundreds of millions of stars in it. It's a very interesting object to take a look at. But there are a couple other really cool objects for us to take a look at in Leo. Uh, there are a couple of groups of galaxies that we can find. One of them is called the Leo Triplet, because there are three galaxies very close to each other. So we'll look for that one next as we zoom out here. We'll look down towards the rear end, towards the back legs of Leo. And as we zoom in here, then we'll start to see some of these galaxies coming into view. Now, this is the Leo triplet, three bright galaxies that are relatively close together from our perspective, including this galaxy here, which has a great name. I think it is called the Hamburger Galaxy because it looks, well, kind of like a hamburger from the side on right there. So you can find the Leo triplet, these three bright galaxies, very close together. They're great to image with a decent telescope. And they're not too far away from the rear legs of Leo the Lion. Now, the next group of galaxies that we have has a couple of different names. Um, it's called the Hickson 44 group, the NGC 3190 group, or sometimes called the Leo Quartet. And it is going to be up here right towards the back of the head of Leo the Lion. If we consider this question mark here, this backwards question mark is his mane, then right here towards the back of the head, the back of the mane, we will find this group of four galaxies that are very close together. There are some bright stars that are in front of them, so they might be a little bit harder to get great pictures of those galaxies, but you can find these four bright galaxies. And then there's even a fifth one, which is a little bit dimmer, a little bit harder to find over here. So these objects, including this really cool looking spiral here with the arms coming off of it, are all going to be right in the sort of the back of the head of Leo the lion. Now, you have to remember that all of these things are very hard to see. You're not going to see them with just your eyes or even a good set of binoculars or even a halfway decent telescope. You're going to need a good telescope and some dark skies to be able to see these objects. 
and you'll have to probably look at that part of the sky for a while. So having a tracking system or something like that as the stars move across the sky will help you to take a look at or even image these objects. But that is our closer look at Leo the lion and some of the interesting deep sky objects within this part of the sky. Well, thank you everyone for taking a look at Leo the lion in much deeper context with me today. There's one more object in Leo that is out there, but even with a good telescope, you wouldn't be able to find it here from the surface of planet Earth. And you can see it behind me. Let me get rid of my webcam view here. This is what we call the cosmic horseshoe, and it is an object that is distorted by gravity. So that blue ring you can see is actually a galaxy that is behind that orange galaxy in the front. And the gravitational effects of the orange galaxy warps the image around it, causing this sort of Einstein circle, almost a full circle. And it only happens if a very massive object is right in front of another very massive object. It's a very rare thing for us to get a picture of it. Now, this picture was taken using the Hubble Space Telescope, so backyard observers are not going to be able to get an image this good. But that's all the time we have for taking a deeper look at LEO, so thank you for doing that with me. Again, my name is Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center, and remember to get out there and take a look at your night skies.